everyone, welcome to my session in this Telegram World Interaction Design Day. I'm Jendika from Indonesia and I'm very excited to be part of this global event which is organized by IXDA. And in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to share to you all topics about things I learned from working in the GA Transportation, a WAPTEC company, Innovation Lab. It's a division from General Electric's business unit in transportation industry before brought by WAPTEC in 2019, who helped bring design and system thinking culture in the company. I want to share the things that might not only inspire you to setting up vision in organization levels, but also practicing critical thinking as individual about enabling a sustainable future. And this is the team of the Innovation Lab, and behind us is a tool that Innovation Lab created for our company, partnered with a design agency from Seattle, TIC. It's a vision timeline tools. And this tools become so interesting because it actually shows the prediction what will happen in the next 20 years from this tool was created. It is not a science fiction. And in fact, we have been come a long way to create this tool, which I also going to present in this presentation. And the thing might also become more interesting because even we are working predicting the future things, and the industry we are working on, in fact, actually as a very old industry from a very old company. And for a hundred years old company, actually GE Transportation uh, was founded in 1907, which of course, it's certainly engineering centric and shifting into digital and to be able to survive in this internet of things era is another big effort to do, right? The other aspect like the retirement of the workforce because you know that most of the uh, workforce in this industry are very old people and the demand of the tech-savvy workers because you are shifting the digital not to mention also there were so many disruption technologies like a drive of truck, cargo drone, cargo delivering robots which disrupt the movement of goods in another level is the concept of the electric train still relevant? are we just going to shifting from uh, fuel-based train into digital, sorry, into electrical. And what about the other things like climate changes, sea level arising, trade tension, terrorism, robot for human, all the turbulent world that we might face in the future. And it doesn't have to be that far to get that fear. We actually have seen a lot of disruption and their impact, right? The taxi industry before Uber arrived, the music industry before internet downloads and the printing industry before the computer designs and in this pandemic virus uh, outbreak is really such an aspect of things that change almost everything in our life and we can see what was happening to the industry related things companies are doing their best to keep up and to rest ahead but what the most important is to enable adapting to the environment around us and to ensure the success within it while also keeping the world to be more sustainable place to live. And I want to quote uh, one of the popular quotes from Darwin. Um, it is not the most intellectual of the species that survives. Uh, it is not the strongest that survives, but the species that survives is the one that is able best to adapt and adjust to the changing environment in which it finds itself. So in this presentation, what I really want to say is within organizations, this central role can be far beyond the UI UX role. And part of my journey uh, will come from freelancing and competition world, which the primary focus is to delivering visual Shifting into enterprise level is not only has opened a lot of new knowledges to me, like design thinking, uh, design system, etc. But also as the time goes on, 
I witnessed that our role as user experience designer can be not only on the art and design domains, but also to be involved further upstream in the strategy and future studies. So that's the thing of the presentations. And this is the mapping uh, of correlations between art, strategy, uh, design, and future studies by Montgomery. It's titled as the Unresolved Mapping of Speculative Designs. It shows how interesting multiple domains like overlapping each other map in the constraint level. While also giving us ideas, the subdiscipline outside uh, the design thinking that has become uh, our major domain as designers. And the next question might be, why designer need to be involved in strategy level? Designer or you say design thinker or you expect designer if that sounds better in this context is in the company we work together with the customer to represent their need, to represent their voice. But in the same time, designer also in such a unique position, not only to understand the need of user uh, we are selling uh, to, but also user will get impacted the world they live in. When we are talking about strategy and our position, our role is to objectively look at the strategy and really looking at the ethical impact, uh, the environmental impact. It doesn't necessarily we need to brief enough to speak up against the not so green policy or whatsoever. But what we can do is to ask the right question like in facilitating and inviting stakeholder in the workshop, for example. So the participant will think about the right things, questioning themselves, because I really believe that no one is gonna like destroy the world, right? So really think about the future and really think about the impact. And uh, this is the another diagram from Karina she created this based on the previous diagram to test the relationship between the different subdisciplines across two axes. Its attitude towards strong sustainability and the attitude towards change. And in these diagrams, it shows that strategy are, are leaning to incremental attitude to change. And our job as a designer is to pull the strategy into the transformative way because if strategy is still in the left side it's it's going to always represent the business needs right and it also give us ideas to pull that things we might also interest in some other domains like speculative design science fictions which might catalyst to pull that over as designers, we are not only able to design and championing our customer, we actually able to drive a change and even predicting the future and help to prevent the company from extinctions and shares the common uh, preferable future together and ultimately even make the world a more sustainable place to live. So really, um, what I'm going to share is some steps you can do, which has been uh, done in many organizations in order to predict the future, preparing on the right things, and ultimately to create a long-term goal. There are several steps that you can do. And the first step is really to identify the driver of change that would have impact on your industry. And in technology, is not the only source of disruption. It's, it's often that what is going on outside the technology or even outside your industry, this is the greatest sources of surprises. And as we have seen earlier, maybe the fear also was caused and impacted from the existing company policy, like the business opportunities, which comes from exploitations. So really to identify based on the steep framework, it was um, society, technology, 
environment, economy, and politics. And such as some example is like rising sea levels, uh, reclaimed habitats, robotics and automation, terrorism, infectious disease, and pandemics, changing nature of people, how people work and the competition for, for talents. Like we have seen the crowdsourcing thing, the threat protections and open borders, blah, blah, blah. What you can do is doing interview with multiple sector expert, industry representative, futurist, and combine with some horizon scans like uh, trying to find signals and literature from various sources uh, such as polls, data sets, blogs, publications, global trends, uh, survey academic publication, blah, 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 to discuss what is being prevented as well as uh, what's being introduced. It's the scary stories. And try to collect as many drivers as possible and cast the net wide to identify both relevant drivers and trends, as well as weak signals from the wide range of the field that might impact the industry external operating uh, environment. And once you had all the drivers, the next step is to prioritize and, and theming. Assess the drivers and score them to see which one has the greater impact than the average impact and uncertainty than the others. It's what's called the key driver of changes. These drivers indicate the critical uncertainties that we will reflect uh, next in the scenario development. You will get driver assessed as having greater than average impact and uncertainty. And really focus on that particular things, elaborate the information, try to understand more of the context, then cluster high impact drivers into the themes group. The theme will be useful to create an imaging uh, the scenario of the possible worlds that the industry may face in the next 20 years. Some example of the themes can be like uh, geopolitics, data, like Africa and Asia Pacific, government, security and borders, privacy and trust, business models, economy, values and communities, environment and technologies. But you really need to focus on two big themes that will affect the operation to the industry based on the insight you got uh, from the driver of changes. The unrelated critical themes of the uncertainties. When you had the two big themes uh, of the critical uncertainties, driver of changes, the next interesting step is to develop scenario. And scenario is a very important to really have a picture of the world the industry might face. And having multiple different scenarios means we can anticipate the different future. And the best way to do it is by using two axis method. Put the two unrelated themes in the different axis and create a polar with two different ends. Write a couple of sentences to describe uh, this future if both conditions are true. You can uh, see a like, variety of unique utopic or dystopic future stories. Some of the examples of the two axes I got from uh, IATA, uh, Industry Affairs Committee on their publication about the future of airline industry in 2035 to give more further context. Like uh, using data and geopolitics themes, which being developed as the open connected data versus closed data, and calm geopolitics versus turbulent geopolitics, you can imagine for different scenario what's the possible world if the two conditions were true. The first scenario will be like the new level of competition of economic and military, which creates a turbulent world and shifting to new frontiers, including space. And the Eastern country also gain more power because of the democratized and open information, but also persisting other challenges like cybercrime and state surveillance. I also imagine the peaceful world, the closed data, the dominant elites controls the data, 
but country collapsed and leave problems internally where public increasingly dissatisfied with the political elites. And that also can be worse or even better in the other scenario because it was a different uh, four different scenario. Maybe some uh, easier example like in the transportation worlds, like the actual be the tech development and the government policy, which being developed as the high tech versus low tech and supportive versus restricted policies. It's affected in the realization years of the automation vehicle. The traffic is going to happen, the economic growth, the clean technology, blah, blah, blah. Imagine that scenario, and trying to imagine how the, few, the world looks like in the next 30, uh, 20 years. Once you have the scenario, the next step is to ideate uh, the solutions. Design within each of them, uh, create a solutions, recommendations, what your industry should do in order to survive in the particular world. By looking at some predictions of disruption technologies, like future cards, may also help to ideate solutions. We'll also get more details on what to anticipate specifically. It also gives us ideas to segment the future into what's happening, things in the near future, and the things in the distant future. We'll also try to idea it based on the existing and predicted technologies. And the other reason really of having a four different scenario is the ability to test a solutions of a scenario into the different scenarios. So what if the actual future turns out to be different than we expected? How is our product solution still relevant? How to avoid the loss of making something irrelevant? That is the thing that we need to prevent and can be very useful we test out into different scenarios. Once we have the solutions, reverse the workshop, looking into the existed capability and see how can we do differently and being involved. And backcasting is becoming an important step yet the most determining on how you will successfully planning things into the future. But before that, we need to really understand the concept of the uh, future cone. It's very interesting. It is how our judgment about ideas about the future. The original concept was developed based on the taxonomy on the future by Hansi in 1978. It was uh, everything beyond the present moment. It comes uh, from the assumption that the future is not predetermined, inevitable, or fixed, which is the foundational axiom of the future studies. It illustrates three main classes of the future. The first one is the possible, uh, those that we think uh, might happen based on some future knowledge we do not yet possess. Uh, which we make we might possess someday and preferable uh, sorry probable uh, those we think are likely to happen usually based on the current trends and preferable is those we think should or ought to happen and the preferable is uh, becomes our main focus uh, to achieve this future and I took this graphic from uh, relative uh, code or ZA, just to give some ideas about how steps the result of the previous idea phase was laid into outcome framework visual map. It's a long-term future goal is identified and the next step necessary to achieve that goal are visually mapped. And theory of change is maps out the steps that need to be taken in order to drag the preferred future out from the borderline of plausible or possible futures into the probable. So backcasting is really to pull us into the preferred future. So really it's about how to make small steps to get the dream of the preferred future, not just a dream anymore. Another reason of building these value stories is to really sell the boring stuff. Because it is often uh, things like 
don't, don't that not visualized instant ROI like the UX research thing, blah blah blah, are being crossed out from the approved budget. And having this kind of approach will make the decision makers aware of that critical dependencies. Some of things we are doing in our companies like visiting customer sites, shadowing the field crew to understand the day-to-day -day basis, working with cross-functional people in the organizations, and uh, host some innovation workshops across the customer and segments. There are things like we create some actionable steps uh, infographics, some co-creation projects around the world. We have partnered with global crowdsourcing platform Topcoder to imagine the future of the command center of the train. And also we partner with SCAD, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, to create a vision of how the future of the workspace looks like in the virtual reality and augmented reality. Ultimately, we create a central future stories. We created a workshop to value and prioritize the opportunities and map some dependency. And working on the content that have been collected, gaps that have been identified, to see the business communalities to support a central vision, resulting in a big picture vision to first, is a tactical, strategical roadmap into the future of our industry, including and beyond our company. It also a guidance the business can derive the next step from and continue to revisit for organization-wide and broader industry alignment. It also helps the business to think differently about who our customer or markets are. It's a, a company to become known as the market leader and aspire for bigger evangelist organization vision and transform the, cul uh, the customer culture. And the top section is describes the trends and shift that will uh, impact the evolution of our industry, including the key pivot points for the workforce changing in customer expectations, its major era of innovation, and also the other milestone. And the middle sections consists of inventories noun, is the key components required to move forward into the future. The technologies are being created to enable the future patients and associate dependency. I would talk it earlier. Uh, there's a dependency that can also sell the boring stuff. And the last session, which we cannot zoom in, uh, it's a highly highlighted emerging business opportunity that arises as a reason to invest in transformation. This era's user new products and service needs. The future of Reich uh, Vision Timeline becomes a central feature story to share and start a new conversation. We keep the pulse by asking provocative questions in exhibitions, have lively discussion with visitors, making people to experience the new technology, capturing anecdotes from all corners and recursively update it. And I'm going to wrap this presentation with some closing sentences. I'm really being inspired by a presentation of my senior Anthony DePaul in his Interaction 19 keynotes. And no future when we end up is singular. Um, there are winner and loser. There are infinite parallel futures. We can decide which future we want. The challenge is in getting everyone to look in the same direction. As a designer, we need to look beyond today and we have to design for transformations. We need to learn and show our value as a strategic thinker and we must do our job as the steward for past the future. Thank you so much. In 2038, the freight industry moves an order of magnitude more goods to keep up with the demands of the global economy. To meet this need, freight radically transformed into a collaborative, predictive, and adaptive ecosystem, 
all in order to max out existing capacity and serve new types of customers. How did we get here? The threat of retail giants becoming logistics companies ignited a change across carriers in the freight industry. They collaborated on new business models enabled by shared data and networks, redefining the meaning of competition. They did this by aggregating and connecting data that allowed them to predict problems and surges in business before they ever became issues. Routes and plans became adaptive, dynamically replanning based on simulations and historic trends, with freight moving seamlessly across multiple carriers and modes as needed. This is all supported by innovative new vehicles and infrastructure that help increase efficiency for everyone, with end customers supported by the entire network for more flexible, cost-effective, and reliable shipments, as well as new service experiences. This future is coming. How did you invent it?